Welcome to the channel, my name is Kayla. I have an eight-year-old son named Shane with autism and I created this as a space so I can share everything I know and hopefully help to improve the lives of some families living with autism. Today I'm gonna talk about Shane's bolting, wandering, uh, impulsivity, just running away randomly. Many autistic families are going through that. I'm gonna talk about why autistic children do wander off and some of the things you can do to keep them safe. There are many reasons why autistic children might wander off. One of the main reasons is that many autistic children actually have a weakened sense of fear. And this translates into every area of their life. For example, I remember Shane used to climb to the top of the jungle gym and like jump off. He was just not scared of anything, even compared to like every other boy in the playground. He would wander off into traffic sometimes, despite me having like showed him social stories and reading books when he was like, this is like when he was like three and four years old. and. I remember thinking this kid isn't scared of anything and the more I educated myself and the more I came uh, familiar with autism, I realized that many families are going through this. Many autistic children just don't grasp the concept of fear the way other three or four year olds might do it. Your child also might just wander off because they see something they see or want. It's as simple as that. Many autistic children have uh, preferred activities that they really, really like or obsess over. So if your child sees that, whether it's an activity or a food or a color and they see it, and they might not be able to communicate with you that they see it and want it, they might just go get it. I remember me and Shane, we were at a skating rink, I believe, and he was sitting beside me, and at the time he had had ice cream like once or twice, I think he was about three years old, sitting directly beside me, my friend was on the other side, I looked to her to say something, and when I turned back, Shane is almost 40 feet away, talking to this man reaching for his ice cream. Like, in a split second, he managed to get that. He saw ice cream, he wanted it, and that was it, you know? So. They may just be interested in something and they might impulsively act towards that. Again, a lot of autistic children are very impulsive. They see something, they want it, they're going to get it, simple. Escaping, it is a huge reason why many autistic children just bolt or wander off. They want to leave any given situation because something is bothering them or it's an activity that they don't want to participate in. I remember when me and Shane used to do uh, speech and language sort of exercises at home when he was like two and a half, three years old, he would just wander off. Like I'd be trying to get him to do the ABCs or point to things and say whether they were in or on something. And he would just like start wandering off and he's gone. And I'm like, where are you going? And he, it was because it was difficult for him and it was hard for him. And he didn't like it and it's as simple as that it's the same with when we'd be in the park playing games with other kids if the activity required a lot of language and back and forth talking I would just like turn my back for a second when I look Shane was like on his way to the baseball baseball field beside the park without the other kids he was finding it difficult because he couldn't keep up with the conversation or the rules of the game so he would just leave Another reason why Shane used to run away or bolt when he was younger is because of his sensory processing disorder. He would walk into a mall and the lights would be just humming and the music would be too loud and the people were talking too much and he would just want out of that situation. So he would just take off on me and I'd have to be running after him. It is really difficult for many autistic children to process out all this outside noise that they're not enjoying and because of that, when they're, especially when they're very young, like five and under, they just try to escape. They just try to bolt, get the hell out of there. It's very understandable now, given what I know, but at the time it was super scary and very dangerous and I felt like I can't even take this kid to the mall because he's always running away from me. But he wasn't running away from me, he was running away from something else that was really irritating his sensory processing disorder within the environment. Any parent out there who has experienced their child bolting on them in a busy mall or wandering off when you look in the opposite direction while at the park, knows how stressful that is and that sort of stress doesn't leave after the experience is over it stays with you for a very long time basically every time you leave the house with your child now for us autism parents it's even worse because many of our children cannot communicate their needs or may not be able to tell somebody their name or their phone number shane is nine and i'm still trying to get him to remember his phone number so of course i have a huge fear that if he decides to wander off because he sees something that he likes or somebody has something that he has a interest in and he wanders off that how will he communicate who he is and how will somebody help him to get back to me? Some of the things that I do as well as some of the other autism parents are doing to help their children stay safe is to educate the community around them. For example, if you have neighbors, let them know that your child is autistic, maybe not verbal, and that they are prone to wandering. You can also go and talk to your local police station and register your child and say like, he's prone to wandering, these are the places he tends to go, this is his name, this is where he lives, and here is my phone number in case it happens. Every single person who interacts with your child when you're not around. 
Let them know my child may just take off or wander off. Give them the information they need to anticipate this happening. This can include like camp counselors, teachers, lunchroom staff at the school, even a speech therapist who may be working with your child. Anybody who's interacting with them, let them know that there's a chance they could take off unexpectedly. I have a friend who has a five-year-old daughter who is non-verbal and has very strong preferred interest in anything that is glittery or shiny. She is just immediately drawn to it and very impulsive when she sees it. So this doesn't matter if it's another kid's backpack she sees a little sparkly uh, unicorn on, or it could be a package in a grocery store or a bracelet in the middle of a mall. She will just take off because she wants to touch it. And because she's nonverbal, this has been really hard for my friend. So they actually came up with a sign that her daughter can use when she sees something that she wants to touch or experience. It took a while for them to introduce this and for her daughter to actually use it. But now every single time she sees something that she wants to touch or experience, she gets her mom's attention and she does this. It's a very simple thing, but this way her, her mom can actually help her experience that and be aware that she wants it. So she doesn't always just run after it without letting her mom know. Something else that I know many parents are using is to just use some sort of badge or necklace or pin that lets other people know that your child is autistic. So if by chance they do manage to get away from you, somebody may see this badge or this uh, tag on their backpack letting them know I'm autistic, I'm nonverbal, or you know they just need a little help with their phone number or something like that. It's a very simple thing you can do. You can buy them all over online. Etsy has a lot of really nice ones. Just something you can attach to your child so that people know they needed a little extra help. I'm very happy to share with you that over the years, Shane's bolting has significantly decreased. It's really rare that he will just take off randomly in the middle of a mall or something on me anymore. He does still wander off, but usually he gives me some sort of sign or signal or it's within the context of what we're doing in general. So it's really not as bad or most importantly, it's not as scary for me anymore. There is hope at the end of the tunnel and it does get better. You just have to educate the people around you and also continue to educate your child about the dangers surrounding them. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I post videos every single Sunday. So if you're interested, subscribe to find out what I'm gonna post next. Thanks so much. Take care.